Hello, this is a Kenya Podcast Preacher, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Water. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our lives. The title of this message is Consider the Cost and Then Consider the Cost. This is a multi-episode series in which this is episode three or four. So if you're following this message up with the last one, then what I say next makes sense. There we or I have it. I was learning and teaching at the same time. Sometimes you have to get word dirty to get a fuller understanding what one word means. So now when we hear or read the word blaspheme in the Bible, we will know what it is talking about. Now some of y'all are saying, like, we don't have the time to get into this type of study. Why, Huckleberry, I won't live long enough to get through the Bible even one time. To that I say that I am aware of two people who had packed out ministerial lives who found the time to do so. John Sung read the Bible 40 times in six months. Now, I know he was preoccupied by his new short-term address, but he took full advantage of his life's downtime. The other person was George Mueller, who read it over 200 times. And most of us know that Oral Roberts read through the New Testament over 100 in his lifetime, just to include a third person. Verse 11, Now when they bring you to the synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer, or what you should say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. There is a lot that could be unpacked in these verses, but I have better messages that specifically deal with some of the elements you might right away see as offensive and or impossible to carry out. In truth, you cannot consider the cost beforehand. You can't because you have to be pruned, grown, developed, discipled, tested, gone through trials, persecuted, gone through suffering, and still remain buoyant in the things of God. When you can come up for air and say, I can do this in Him, you might now be ready to consider the cost. To say or imply this beforehand is to act in the same spirit that Peter was acting in when he thought it was a good idea to instruct Jesus on the benefits of telling the truth. Matthew 26, 31, 35. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered and said to him, Even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you that this night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Let's take a look at the lifestyle of the heavenly riches and forever famous. Because somewhere along their journey, they performed a cost analysis and came up with the benefit that it was worth it. 2 Corinthians 6, 4.10 But in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, in fastings, by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report, and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. So what have I got to lose that won't be gained in things and positions that outweigh those other not so positive descriptors? Philippians 3, 7, 12. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss, for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I might gain Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him 
and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if, by any means, I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Any questions as to why the Lord used Paul to pen most of the New Testament? 2 Corinthians 11, 20, 30 For you put up with it if one brings you into bondage, if one devours you, if one takes from you, if one exalts himself, if one strikes you on the face. To our shame I say that we were too weak for that. But in whatever anyone is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews five times I received forty stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides other things what comes upon me daily my deep concern for all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is made to stumble, and I do not burn with indignation? So Paul was in peril from his own, who at one point in time probably told him that they would die for him and follow him to the grave if they had to. Now don't worry, you, in all likelihood, will not experience all of these things. Didn't God say I wouldn't give you more than you could handle? 1 Corinthians 10:13. Also, I don't believe God included this in the Bible to scare the bejeebies out of you, but to show you Paul's attitude while in a big old blank storm, much of his Christian walk. Verse 30. If I must boast, I will boast in the things which concern my infirmity. Hebrews 11, 32, 40. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jetham, also of David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trials of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. So again, what I'm not saying here is that everyone is going to die for their faith, although Paul does state a marvelous thing in Galatians. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It will be rougher for some than for others. This does not mean that if you do not die for your faith, then you are not hot for God. Many Christians I have read about have died of natural causes without a stripe on their back. But if we are dead to ourselves, then we already have died to whatever may come. Well, that's it for today. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, steal, and destroy the works of the enemy 
and create space for the light of life to shine through into people's lives. Find a seat and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep waters.